Tonight's top EU stories from the UNIT website include Germany threatens to hit Mercedes and BMW production in Britain, France and Italy. Turkey's EU membership bid falters as diplomatic row with Germany deepens. EU tells France to reform pensions and rein in spending. Is Portugal the Troika's sometime poster child heading for the rocks? Plus, Eurozone crisis is imminent. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage, senior members of the German government have warned EU member states that German car makers could scale back or scrap production plans in their countries unless they support weakened carbon emission rules, according to diplomatic sources. With EU governments and lawmakers aiming to finalise the rules next week, which most of the 27 member states back, Germany has stepped up the pressure on them to water down limits on vehicle emissions to protect the country's mighty car industry, particularly luxury makers such as BMW and Daimler. The sources added that some calls warning EU member states of possible consequences have come from members of Chancellor Angela Merkel's office. This article demonstrates a clear link between EU directive policies and the United Nations Agenda 21 programme developed in Rio. Take a search for Green Mask in our archives for footage of Rosa Corey's lecture on this topic. Turkey's chances of a breaking a three-year stalemate and relaunching its bid to join the European Union look like being dashed because of the government's ruthless response to three weeks of street protests amid worsening friction between Ankara and Berlin. The foreign ministry in Berlin summoned the Turkish ambassador to Germany on Friday to explain the harsh language directed at the Chancellor Angela Merkel by Egemen Bagi, the Turkish official in charge of negotiations with the EU. Merkel had said earlier this week that she was appalled at the very tough response by the Prime Minister in ordering riot police to clear central Istanbul of thousands of protesters last weekend. (laughs) Well, well, hail the kleptocrats. Talk about pot calling the kettle black. Sorry, Angler, but those same orders have been issued on the streets of France, Spain, Ireland and Greece, with violence and brutal force used by EU riot police against peaceful protesters. And before you start down the road of trying to defend it, go take a look in our video library archives for the series on Ireland, where you will see sitting protesters being clubbed with truncheons, which splits their heads open, and then they are dragged across the floor to be flung in the back of riot vans, and all the while they never lift a finger to defend themselves. You people are truly duplicitous. What comes to mind are the words of Vladimir Bukovsky as he commented on the Soviet communist-style European Commission at the close of our documentary, Betrayed. I have lived in your future, and it didn't work. European Union finance ministers told France on Friday to revamp its pension system by year-end and cut labour costs in return for getting longer to shrink its budget deficit to within EU limits. The ministers backed the European Commission's detailed recommendations on how France should proceed with these reforms, despite Paris's insistence that Brussels cannot dictate its policies. The Eurozone's second-largest economy agrees it must balance its costly pension system accounts by 2020 and regain lost competitiveness to exit a shallow recession and combat high unemployment. (laughs) A shallow recession? Uh, The closet Euro Bureau buffoons need to pull their heads out of the sand. Calling the current economic crisis a shallow recession is like calling the Great Depression of the 1930s a temporary economic downturn. The worst thing about this, as you will see later in the show, is that in the 1930s the national governments were in the main solvent. This current implosion is a very different beast. Portugal was one of the first Eurozone countries to need a bailout. 
its bond yields has risen to above 7% and by 2011 it needed an injection of billions of euros to avoid bankruptcy. A group composed of the ECB, the European Commission and the International Monetary Fund, now commonly known as the Troika, arranged for a £78 billion loan to be transferred to Portugal to stave off its economic implosion. Since then, Portugal has stuck doggedly to the Troika's austerity programme and has managed to achieve two-thirds of the fiscal consolidation that was demanded of it as a condition for the bailout money. But now Portugal seems tired of austerity. On Monday, 1st of July, the government lost its finance minister, Victor Gaspar. Mr Gaspar was one of the prime architects of the Troika-demanded austerity programme. However, he felt his position had become untenable given the rising hostility to the austerity programme. Quick analysis of this story. The key point here is that even though the Portuguese government stuck steadfastly to austerity programmes, it only hit two-thirds of the target, which is 66%. So the Portuguese people lost their jobs, their homes, their livelihoods and their dignity, only to find that they were 34% short of the target. 34%? You mean to tell me that the finance minister was not able to get his budget spreadsheets to predict such an impending failure? Because I can tell you, there isn't a single chief finance officer of private enterprise that would buy that crock of lies. Once again, a Eurozone crisis, or rather a series of Eurozone crises, is imminent. The Greek government has apparently not complied with all the conditions in its bailout agreements, so that the Troika may not replenish its deposits in the way expected. In Portugal, the finance minister has resigned because of the unpopularity of his fiscal austerity programme and government bond prices have slumped. In France, Marine Le Pen's National Front wants withdrawal from the Eurozone and the reintroduction of the franc. It is achieving 21% support in opinion polls, the same as the Socialists and the centre-right UMP. Mrs Merkel may be lucky and avoid a major flaring up of all the tensions before the German general election on the 22nd of September. Or perhaps not. Heaven knows when the various dysfunctional features of a multi-government monetary union become so overwhelming and clear-cut that one or more of the Eurozone members decides to leave. One message from the last few years is that the longer the breakup is postponed, the larger will be the losses to those countries which are large creditors to the system. This week's attachment is a note to be given as evidence to the House of Lords European Union Committee. The committee is taking an interest in what it terms genuine economic and monetary union and wonders how a GEMU might work and what its implications would be for the UK. I argue that the attempt to impose a uniform set of bank capital rules on the Eurozone periphery nations has aggravated their sovereign debt problems and set them on a path of fiscal and monetary retrenchment that has led to massive losses of output and employment. These losses will persist for at least another year or two. Now, a big hat tip and many, many thanks to Tim Congdon, Chief Executive of the International Monetary Research Limited, for writing this article for us. Today in our video library, last year we covered the prophet Max Kaiser and his prediction for the collapse of the global bond market. Max predicted the collapse would begin in April 2013. Well, it appears that his prediction is running a little late, but as you'll see in this interview with Alex Jones, Max highlights the key indicators that predict that the problem has indeed begun. This ties in with the article by Professor of Economics Tim Congdon. And three months ago, we covered the changes that were quietly made by EU banking fiscal policy that enables the banks to perform bail-ins, which is the mechanism used in Cyprus to take the public's deposits to shore up losses made by the banks. In summary, if you haven't looked at Iceland's new economic model, or indeed written to your MP and asked about the Bradbury Pound, then now would be a good time to do both of those things. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. 
You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the E Unit. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. Are you looking for a public speaker for your event? Our public speakers are happy to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area at no cost. If you would like to add interest and value to your group event, then get in touch with us via the word section of our website. Join us in our live question time style online show, The Unit Interactive, broadcast live on our website, theunit.com, and globally via thehangoutshow.com. Join our community on Google+, and you can be part of the wider public voice, united in freedom, liberty, and independence. Simply join our community, The Unit, on Google+. Links to the community page are below. <laughs>